today I want to see how we can calculate the impedance if we have a film on the surface. Okay. The film can be insulating or conducting, conducting can be like a pure metal, can be like a semiconductor. Okay. Initially, there are some models proposed which are like fairly simple models. Later for a film with passivation, which provides passivation, right? We have what is known as point defect model or PDM with certain variations depending on whether it was earlier model or whether it was upgraded later. Okay. And there are some variations of those, one is called surface charge approach and another is called anion incorporation model. So, we will see whatever is possible today and then continue with that tomorrow. And then I want to take up some examples of how AAS has been applied for few cases okay, in the literature. So, one will be using equivalent circuit approach, another will be using mechanistic approach, okay. maybe one or two examples with these. Okay. Very early, Armstrong and Edmondson proposed the following picture for this. You have an electrode with a film and the electrolyte on the other side. You have a metal film interface, you have a film in between and you have film solution or film electrolyte interface and the impedance at Z metal film, Z film, Z FS. So, he proposed a model for that. Film can be an insulator or electronic conductor, electronic meaning it can have electrons or holes. Metal film interface was proposed to be modeled by a resistance in parallel with capacitance. Usually, a resistance is sufficient to model this if the film is a conducting material. The film itself, if it is a pure insulator, it can be represented by a capacitor. If it is a conductor, meaning not like a pure metal, in which case the first metal film interface will be a simple resistor, probably close to 0 ohm. And the film itself will just be modeled as an electrode if it is a clean film without any pores. Okay. When we say conductor here, we mean it is an oxide, but it can conduct like a semiconductor. It is an oxide, but not a clean crystalline oxide without any defect, but it has defects in it. And because of that, you have some conductivity. Okay. And the film solution interface, they propose that it can be modeled with this equivalent circuit. Assuming solution resistance is not there, you have the C2 here representing double layer capacitance. It can possibly be only one resistance. It can also contain a resistance and capacitance in parallel. This is a Maxwell representation. You can have equivalent representation in other types of circuits and allowing for negative values for all of these. That means, you can get only this if you have only R2 along with C2 you can get this type of behavior assuming all these are elements have positive value. You can have this type of behavior assuming the R 3 C 3 are allowed to have negative value. You can have this type of behavior if you assume that R 2 can have negative value and of course, when you have situation where you have passivation, the last one is likely to happen. Okay. But these are simplified versions. And this was not analyzed in detail in terms of getting expression based on kinetic parameter, etcetera, but more in terms of description. And he considered that in the film, you can have electron and hole movements. You can also have what is called cation interstitial. Cation here means, for example, if it is titanium oxide, titanium 4 plus is a cation. Okay. And you have a crystal structure, something that goes in between that is called interstitial. Okay. Anions usually do not move within this as interstitial. Okay. And also within the film, if the concentration of cation changes with distance, then space charge that is within this film, if you slice this into various thin volumes space charge meaning with respect to location the charge varies. Okay. 
that can also be considered and that at that level it was left without any further detailed analysis. Recently a group from Canada has proposed different structures, different equivalent circuits for soft film. This was specifically used for what is called bovine serum albumin okay, or BSA that is used in biosensors usually. Okay. It is a biomolecule, it is used to adsorb or block electrodes in certain specific cases. I will show you examples when I go to the applications later. And when they analyzed the adsorption of this BSA on gold or platinum, I do not remember now one of those electrodes. They came up with certain description saying if you have a film with insulation and non porous, you are going to have a film represented by a capacitance. The film is supposed to be thin, it is a large molecule, but still it is not going to be like many nanometers thick. Okay. And that is represented by a double layer here, electrolyte here. Beyond this, you will not have any element required for this. If it does not allow any reaction to happen, you are going to have CDL and this. If you allow reaction to happen, that means the film is porous with some liquid or electrolyte going in and touching this electrode. So, if you have an insulating film, but that is porous, it allows this electrolyte to see this electrode. We can represent this interaction between the electrode and electrolyte in the pore using this double layer structure. You can say CDL, RT, W here representing Warburg impedance or mass transfer. The overall film is still not very thick, so it is captured by the CF in parallel with RF and of course, you have R solution for the outside film to the reference electrode. This is a proposal to represent a insulating but porous film. It is a conducting film Again, it is a soft film. The way they have modeled that is to say it is a capacitance in parallel with the resistance. It offers significant resistance. It is not like a metal. It allows electron to pass through. Even if it is an organic chemical, it can allow electrons to pass through to some level. When it is very thin, it will offer a resistance, but it is not infinite. And then from here, there is a reaction. So, the reaction occurs here that is given by this RT and W. W may or may not be present depending on whether you have mass transfer limitation or not. So, this is more general and if you do not need ZD, you can remove that from the circuit. But you cannot just imagine that this entire thing is an electrode, you will have to add a capacitance and resistance for this. So, for example, you may deposit a film on an electrode and that may catalyze the reaction. If it is very thin film, versus a little thicker film, you may see a change here, although this may not change. So, that is one way to look at this, but these are still a macroscopic representation saying that okay, you have a film, I am going to model this by capacitor and resistor, I am going to model this by a capacitor. Okay. I am going to say this is porous and then I put a Warburg impedance for this. And they also made a comment that if CF is a CPE, if you model this, it comes out as a constant phase element that is modeled better by a constant phase element than by a capacitor. If, if you actually model this, you are not able to model the data well if you use capacitor, but you are able to model the data if you use a CPE, then it is quite likely that this is porous. That is one of their comments. a more detailed model for passive metals. Passive metal means metals which offer passivity in lot of solutions like tungsten, aluminum, titanium, okay. even normal metals like nickel which offer passivation in lot of situations. How do they respond to AC perturbation? What impedance would we see if you apply AC perturbation on that? And this is modeled in detail. 
So, I want to go through the steps not the entire derivation, derivation is very lengthy and complicated, but what is involved in coming up with a model, what are the steps that are necessary and qualitatively what one would expect to see from these mechanistic steps one can say okay, this is what I would expect to see in the impedance. Okay. First is the film which is present on one side you have a metal, another side you have electrolyte, the film is not a proper crystal. In general it is amorphous or it can be many small crystal, polycrystalline. It will have lot of defects, defects means one possibility is vacancy, another is interstitial. Okay. So, I want to show you movement of interstitial, if you assume this is a lattice in 2D, this is a vacancy. Of course, when there is a vacancy, it is likely to move there, but right now just pretend that this schematic is fine. This location, atom in this location A2, if it moves here, it is going to cause a strain in this 4, in this 2D. Of course, in 3D, it is going to be in all the atoms surrounding that. When it moves not through the lattice location, so you have a vacancy here, you have a vacancy here, but through a gap between them, that is called interstitial movement. Cations, if you take for example, titanium, they lose the electrons, the size of this titanium ion is going to be slightly less than the size of this atom. On the other hand, if you take oxygen, the anion O2 minus is going to be little larger. Okay. Within this film, the cation is not going to be hydrated. If you think about solution in the electrolyte, cation is going to be surrounded by water dipoles, whereas within the film it is not likely to be, water is not likely to be present inside. So, cation is smaller here. In the electrolyte, cation tends to be small, but cation does not go alone, it is always surrounded by water dipole, therefore it ends up being actually large, meaning the cation plus the water dipole structure sheath around that together they move, therefore this group is large compared to anion. So, anion does not usually move within crystal, it is very hard for a large ion to move through the crystal. It can hop, meaning an anion here can go to the vacancy, no problem, but it cannot go like this. When I say it does not move, I mean it does not move as an interstitial, it can move to vacancies in the lattice. Now, diffusion of vacancy, okay. in this example, let us say first the atom or ion at location C2 moves to the vacancy which is in B2, B2 is not marked here, that is a vacancy now. So, I can say C2 moves to location B2, I can say the vacancy moves from B2 to C2. So, the vacancy movement is shown by the dashed brown line. Next, let us just say that D3 moves towards the vacancy in C2. Next, I can say E2 moves towards this. So, what this means is, I can say that there are multiple anion or multiple ion movements or I can say one vacancy is moving here. So, it is like this. If one of you move to empty location, another person moves here, another person moves to that empty location, it is basically shifting of many different individuals by one unit versus a person walks in, moves in between and then comes and sits, that is interstitial. Okay. I can think many individual, different individuals, right, jumping or moving or I can say one vacancy is continuously moving. So, this is one vacancy continuously moving, that is what we want to say here, that is how we want to describe it here. So, what it means is cation can move via interstitial, cation can move via vacancy mechanism also, anion will not move as interstitial. So, if anion comes on that side, let us say that is film solution interface, this is metal film, this entire region is covered with film that anion is not likely to come all the way here that easily. Although that anion can fill a vacancy, vacancy jump can happen. That is, if there is a vacancy here for anion, another anion can move here, 
another anion can move to that. So, it can accommodate a fresh anion from outside. Although vacancy was originally here, the vacancy has to jump many times, go there and then the fresh anion can be accommodated there. Although vacancy is here, it is not possible for that anion to just walk right through and come here. Whereas, if cation vacancy is there, a cation can go through this lattice, cation can also go via jump, jump meaning via lattice jumps. So, essentially I can summarize this as 3 ions moving or I can say 1 vacancy moving by 3 steps, 3 ions move by 1 step or 1 vacancy moving by 3 steps. Okay. So, this is the description here, okay. you have a metal on one side, solution on the other side and film in between these two. You have a metal on top of metal, you have a film and, and that is exposed to the solution. So, to a large extent I will use the notation that is used by the author that is McDonald, but some cases I will probably make it slightly different. So, totally there are 7 reactions that are considered here. Okay. First reaction, you have a metal and in the film there is a vacancy for the metal and the metal is present in the charged state, it is a vacancy for the ion. So, film for example, may be TaO2, it may be tungsten oxide. Okay. Here it is present as Ta4 plus and 2O2 minus, tungsten 6 plus and 3 ions of oxygen. Okay. Now, here in this example, it is like this, you have an anion or you have 2 anions O2 minus O2 minus and we are expecting Ta4 plus to be present, but that is not present here, it is a vacancy, it is a defective film. Okay. So, that vacancy is present, it is in charged state if that is filled, it has to be filled in charged state. We cannot replace this with a titanium atom, it has to be replaced, it has to be filled by a titanium 4 plus ion. So, what happens is this metal goes as ion here, it leaves a vacancy here for the metal, 4 electrons are taken here. This psi here represents 4 in this example, it can represent 6 for tungsten, whatever the charge is this is vacancy in the metal, this is ion in film and this ion is going to be right next to this metal film interface. It is not going to replace a vacancy here, if it has to replace a vacancy here, it needs multiple jumps there. So, in one step all that we say is metal film interface, any vacancy that is right next to this interface any vacancy in the film right next to this interface can be filled by metal going to that with electrons transferred into this. The vacancy within the metal is usually taken up quickly, meaning it moves quickly, metal atoms will come and fill this very quickly, it is taken in. So, we assume we have a bulk metal, thin film on the surface exposed to this solution and any vacancy that is generated in the metal will quickly go in. So, we have a large sink for this, we say it is consumed quickly. Okay. So, the equation is written like this, first reaction is K1 occurring at a rate given by this, K1 is the rate constant, metal near the interface plus a cation vacancy near the interface, they interact, the cation vacancy is filled in the film, vacancy is put in the metal, but it goes quickly, disappears quickly and psi number of electrons are released. Quick reaction is the, the vacancy in the metal getting consumed? That is assumed that it is very fast. See this vacancy is not going to remain here. So, what we assume is this is a slow step, possibly a slow step. What we show here is a slow step. What I am describing and not showing in the picture is this moving quickly. So, what will happen is this side is going to be replenished like this. After this, 
implicitly I am going to say this block with the vacancy is going to look like this block without vacancy because this vacancy is filled by metal atoms moving in. Metal atom moving in is considered very fast. So, what we say is in the metal film interface the cation vacancy is now consumed. This interface does not move, we still have metal on the left of this interface and film on the right side and this is called lattice conserving reaction. Okay. Overall there is a dissolution of the film under steady state condition if you just have a DC potential you will have a film of certain thickness. It does not mean nothing is happening, what it means is the rate of dissolution of the film should be equal to the rate of formation of the film, then the film thickness is remaining the same. That means its interface is moving continuously, but it is retaining this thickness on the average of course. Okay. But sir in the film we are not making a new cation vacancy, we are just consuming that vacancy. So, how it can be possible that we are maintaining the interface? So, there are seven reactions, we are still describing the first reaction. But in that one you have mentioned uh, that we have to maintain that interface. That so, that when we see all seven reactions, I have not described the dissolution of the film yet. I have not described the formation of the film yet. So, when we see all seven reactions, we have to put them together and then we should expect under steady state condition, the rate of dissolution and rate of formation of the film have to be the same. Here in this example or in this step, we are not forming film, we are not dissolving film, we are filling the vacancy in the film. So, this is not going to increase or decrease the thickness of the film. Second step, so in this of course, you have lattice points right. Some of them may be filled, so some of them are going to be anion, some of them are going to be cation that is first point. Second point some of them are going to be vacant, it can be anion vacancy or cation vacancy. If it is a cation vacancy only a cation can fill it, anion vacancy only an anion can fill that okay. And also there are gaps in between. So, a metal near the interface metal on the left side can lose electrons, it can go into this as an interstitial cation can form. If there are no vacancies right next to this, if all these are filled with cation and anion with no vacancy, still it is possible for this metal when we give positive charge, when I make it anodic, when I make this electrode anodic, it is possible for the metal to lose n number of electrons or psi number of electrons, become metal psi plus. If there are vacancies, naturally it will first go and fill the vacancy. No vacancies, it can go as an interstitial that is the second step. Again the vacancies that are formed on the metal side are consumed quickly, therefore the metal remains as one block one on the left side, film also remains on the right side, it is a lattice conserving equation and of course, we call the rate constant as K2. So, sir I mean if the film has vacancies obviously the preference will be first to fill the vacancies. vacancies then it goes into the interstitial. Yes, at least that is what I would guess. Okay, so there is obviously a preference, right? Yes. The equations happening. Yes. So when we assign rate constant, we should look at the data and see which one happens. And I have not gone into the details of analyzing an experimental data with this, but if I have to guess, I would think cation vacancy will be filled preferably. And if there are no vacancies, only then it would go towards interstitial. Or if it's going to go in both simultaneously in parallel. I would say a larger rate constant for the filling the vacancies and a smaller rate constant for going towards interstitial. Sir, if it was a cathodic potential, would it happen? Cathodic potential, you won't have a film formation. If film is already existing, it will be there. It's not easy to reduce certain films. Some films can be reduced. Some films may not be reduced, but you will not have film dissolution. Also, typically under cathodic condition you would not have significant film dissolution. So, nothing will happen that is all.
under anodic potential this can happen. Under cathodic potential for example, in corrosion people use what is called cathodic protection. So, they will apply a negative potential and as long as it goes below certain value you will not have this. If you go too negative you may have other problems, but that is a slightly different story. If you are too negative hydrogen evolution will happen and that will lead to other issues. Generally here we are considering anodic conditions. So, this part is okay. Third, okay, what is given the equation is written like this, a metal near this interface, it does not go as interstitial, it does not fill any vacancy because probably there are no vacancies around here or there are not too many vacancies. It loses n number of electrons or psi number of electrons, psi number of electrons and becomes cation, but it has not moved yet into the film. Instead, what we say is the following. Let us say there is an anion vacancy here. Okay. This we can say is associated with this cation and together it forms film plus an anion vacancy. Instead of saying it is just a cation, we say it is a film which is metal oxide with an anion vacancy. That means, film is growing into this metal. That means, anions will diffuse in by single jumps and come here. If not immediately after this, probably few moments later, anion will come here, sit next to the cation, it forms a metal oxide film. So, way I have written that is metal with the rate constant K 3 forms a metal ion cation by giving up so many number of electrons and that is equivalent to saying you have a metal oxide film with the vacancy for the anion side. Of course, you are giving up the same number of electrons as before. So, I can say this on the right side or I can put this on the right side. The way it is written that is it forms a metal cation and it is associated with the vacancy. So, this is describing probably implicitly that this is actually a metal film, it is not a metal cation sitting in the metal. If it is a cation it cannot be in the metal, it has to be in the film or it has to be in the solution. An atom is in the metal, an ion is not in the metal either an ion vacancy or an ion is not in the metal. So, this way it is a film forming reaction. So, we say metal atom becomes a metal ion, but it has not moved into the film existing film yet. So, we would say it is film growing into the metal and we also say anion vacancy and associated anion vacancy is present. Okay. And this is called lattice non conserving reaction because lattice actually grows. this is the third step. Another way to visualize this, okay. it is effectively the same reaction. Okay. So, we can say these are all cation and anions, filled cations and anion locations in the lattice. When a metal loses a number of electrons and become metal psi plus, an anion here can move next to this, leaving a vacancy here then you can clearly see this is a metal oxide, that is also a possibility. It is just another way to visualize this to say we are forming a metal oxide here with oxide vacancy. So, I can say this oxide vacancy is in the film that is already present or I can look at it in the previous case and say this cation is formed and that is associated with the vacancy. Either way, You can visualize this either way, but basically this is metal forming film by losing n number of electrons. So, the oxygen comes from film or within the metal? Within the metal there is no oxygen. 
the oxygen has to come from the film. Oxygen actually has to come from outside through the film, but it can't just diffuse and come in. It has to come by multiple movements of oxygen anions, oxygen ion, or the corresponding vacancies. So, this vacancy, anion vacancy is created in the filling itself. So, one way to visualize is this one anion that is already present in the film has moved here, but that is going to leave a vacancy for anion. So, here we are generating anion vacancies. Look at the previous cases, okay. let us look at it one by one. First, we are consuming cation vacancy. That means, somewhere else I have to produce cation vacancies also, but right now we are looking at step by step. One, we are consuming cation vacancy here. Here we are not producing any vacancy, we are not consuming any vacancy, we are just producing interstitial. Interstitial has to be taken out somewhere also, that is also there. We are producing interstitial in the second step. Third step, we are producing anion or oxygen ion vacancies in this example. And there are multiple ways to describe that or visualize it. Sir, uh, but in the, met in the metal electrode, right, there will not be any vacancies because outside of the metal electrode, there will not be any vacancy. So, vacancy. so, if we see a vacancy here, it is not metal. If we see a vacancy right next to that, metal cannot be present as a ion. So, you have an ion here, you have a vacancy, it has to be a film. So, but uh, the, uh, the oxygen ions are coming into the metal, I mean at the interface and forming an oxide, right? Yes. It is like uh, it is, uh, uh, layer is growing inside. So yes. For that to happen, there should be some vacancies in the metal electrode, right? Otherwise, how the oxide uh, formation will happen, sir? There is going to be expansion of the metal. When metal is oxidized, it is not going to remain at the same volume. It is going to cause a strain. We are showing it like a clean color here. If there are atoms, oxygen comes in, it is going to strain this. So, but anions, obviously anions cannot… Uh, uh, anions can move one jump if there is a vacancy. They can, uh, what do you say, move through vacancies, but they cannot move through interstitial. No, they cannot. So, but… Uh, okay, just visualize this. Let us say this is an imaginary plane. You have metal here, another metal here, another metal here. Okay. This metal loses an electron. Okay, it becomes an ion. This also loses an electron, becomes an ion. These are positively charged, negatively charged metal will be attracted towards this, anion will come in, do not think of it as an interstitial now, but it is pushing it apart and coming in. That is forming the film. So, when a film is formed, oxide is formed on a metal, there is going to be a strain. Now, one can argue and say that is coming as an interstitial, but one more layer is formed, this moves in, this is actually film with different gap between the metal atoms. So, between the metal atoms, there is a space. In the pure metal, there is going to be one space. In the oxide, it is going to be larger space between the metal atoms because it is going to be metal, oxide, oxygen, metal. That comes because of this coming in and pushing it out. There is going to be strain. There is going to be stress associated with that. But we do not call that as interstitial movement. But I, I suppose your question is, you have a metal here, you have another metal atom here. How are you getting a vacancy? Is it called interstitial? No, we do not call that as interstitial. And when an oxygen anion comes here, it is going to push this metal atom outside, inside, whichever way you describe it, but we call it as formation of metal oxide there. So, uh, through the film, it hops through the vacancies, but uh, when it comes to the interface, it forms oxide. Okay, it pushes them out and forms oxide. So, that is going to cause a strain, but we do not call that as interstitial to be called truly as interstitial. It has to go through many, many such layers or uh, many, many uh, such planes freely. Then it would be called interstitial, whereas here it comes, pushes it out and stays. At the most, it can move one step. It cannot move multiple steps or we do not 
think it moves multiple steps. So for further happening or the further growing of the film into the metal electrode, there will be always a constant because of the strain, right? Yes. See, basically, let's say this is metal. It has formed a cation. This, you may have another metal also present here forming a cation. An oxide anion here will move here and leave a vacancy. Now, this metal can form a cation after some time. This can move here so that it is associated with that. It will leave a vacancy here. One way you can think is when it forms a cation, it forms a vacancy right next to that. And therefore, to fill that vacancy, it is moving it. That is one way to visualize it. Okay. But whenever this metal gets converted to metal oxide, it is going to cause at that interface, it is going to cause a strain. In fact, when it is continuously forming and growing, it has lot of stress. That is why this film is usually not crystalline or it is not really large crystal. You can have small crystals, but it is amorphous by and large. Where were we? Okay. Next, we want to look at the interface of film and the solution. So, here there is a metal cation present in the lattice and that can go into the solution. Of course, we say it is positively charged, right? So, it is likely for the metal cation to go out into the solution. In general, this may be present as Ta3 plus, for example, and in the solution, it may be present as Ta4 plus. Many a times, so we say this is metal, this metal cation present in the film going into a solution with possibly a different oxidation state. If delta and psi are equal, then there is no electron transfer involved in this. It just goes into the solution and leaves a cation vacancy. This is the generation of cation vacancy. In the first step, we consume the cation vacancy. This step generates a cation vacancy. If necessary, if the psi and delta are different, electrons will be transported through this. It will produce electron. If they are the same, there won't be any electrons. Okay. There is an oxidation involved in this reaction. You will have electron. So naturally, when you look at the impedance calculation, you have to consider this as a Faradayic reaction. If delta is same as psi, we just say it is a chemical reaction. So, metal and the lattice moves into the solution. It may or may not have the same different charge. When it moves, we still say the anion associated with this is present. The film does not change in the length or size. We just say cation vacancy is created in the film. Cation vacancy is created in the film. It will diffuse through the film, come here and this first step will fill that vacancy. So, this step and the first step do not change the thickness of the film or length of that film. Combining the step 1 and 4 will not change the thickness of the film. No, individually they will not, combining them you will not. Combining them you will have a mass balance for cation vacancy. One generates cation vacancy, another consumes cation vacancy. Okay, the interstitial can also go into the solution. Okay. Interstitial at rate constant given by K phi can go into the solution. It is a pretty straightforward reaction. It was not really present as part of this lattice. It, when it got generated from the metal, it went in between this and then went out of this. Basically, in some sense, you can say interstitial generation, interstitial consumption, they are in general of course going to be equal, but under steady state condition, but it is not going to form or consume the lattice. Interstitial can also fill the cation vacancies, right? We are not considering them. 
Likewise, a cation within the film can move into interstitial, not likely to happen, we are not considering them. Usually, if there are no cation vacancies, if a film is of certain particular nature, certain nature such that there are not many vacancies, cation sites are also filled, anion sites are also filled, then it is likely that this cation interstitial is the main movement, main transportation pathway. So, in general we are considering all the reactions, it is possible that for a particular case only certain type of reactions are dominant. Okay. So, formation of cation vacancy and transportation of cation vacancy and consumption of cation vacancy may be a dominant mechanism in a particular metal oxide case. Another case cation interstitial may be the dominant mechanism. Another case anion vacancy may be the dominant mechanism, anion interstitial is not likely. So, we are considering all these equations, but it does not mean all of them will necessarily be of equal magnitude or comparable magnitude in general for all cases. The next one is consumption of anion vacancy. In the early steps, second step anion vacancies were produced at this location and they are consumed in the sixth step, we show that they are consumed in this location. If you have an anion vacancy here that can be filled with oxygen and oxygen comes from water. So, water reacting with this film basically anion vacancy means there is a cation right next to that, there is no anion, sees water it is going to grab the oxygen and release the H plus. Okay. So, this is a completing reaction with the previous slide. Previous slide is interstitial going into this. One of the older slides where B O was there. No, no it is not competing, this is the one right 3, formation of B O. Whenever a cation is formed, we say oxygen vacancy is formed. Whenever a cation is formed in the metal, it is no longer a metal, it is a film with oxygen vacancy. When a cation is formed and fills the vacancy right next to this interface in the film, we just say it is filling that vacancy, film is not moving, it is not growing. When it goes as interstitial, no problem. When it becomes a cation, it cannot go and fill any vacancy, it cannot go as interstitial, this is actually film formation with anion vacancy. So, that is production of anion vacancy, this example in this case we are consuming the anion vacancy. So, that reaction has to balance this reaction if this is the dominant mechanism. If movement of anion vacancy is the main way to transport, transport current film formation, film dissolution under steady state condition when you look at this, whenever you are creating anion vacancy you also have to consume at another place. Okay. We are creating anion vacancy at this location consuming at the film solution interface. Complementary cation vacancies are created at this interface and they are consumed at the metal interface. So, we say oxygen vacancy in the film is filled or consumed by reaction with water. Again 2 H plus going to solution, the oxygen has come here, but the film has not moved yet. So, it is again a lattice conserving reaction. And the last one is film dissolution. Metal oxide, I given it as I by 2, but basically depends on the valency of this metal. If it is 4 plus, if it is Ta, you will write it as TaO2, if it is tungsten, you will write it as WO3, if it is tantalum, you will write it as tantalum O2.5 or Ta2O5. That in presence of H plus ion, typically anodic dissolution occurs in presence of H plus ion, acidic conditions. So, metal oxide becomes metal in the solution phase 
cation the solution phase H plus and the O form water and if there is oxidative reaction you will get an electron otherwise you would not get electrons basically film is gone. So, this is film dissolution and this is naturally lattice non conserving. So, few points cation vacancies are created on the solution side. Metal film solution cation vacancies are created here, cation vacancies are consumed here. Anion vacancies are created here and anion vacancies are consumed here. Cation vacancies in the metal go quickly in there. Anion vacancy is consumed here using water. So, water is of course, replenished. It is a liquid, the moment it gets consumed, it is going to be another water molecule is going to come. In general, okay, the film also will have electrons and holes, can have electrons and holes. If we say that the vacancies are moving or interstitials are moving and they are the rate limiting step, you can derive it, it will have a signature of Warburg impedance or something similar to that because diffusion is rate limiting. Diffusion here occurs in the presence of electric field, diffusion of charged species. So, it is not just fixed law, you have to use uh, additional factor accounting for the movement of the ions in the electric field. So, when I say it is going to sort of look like mass transfer limited case, in certain cases it will look like Warburg impedance with a finite boundary layer thickness. Okay. Anions are large therefore, they are not going to move as interstitial and if the film is actually a good electronic conductor, electrons and holes move very fast compared to the movement of this ions by diffusion. So, this will not give that much current, the maximum current will come because of the flow of electrons and holes. So, it will look pretty much like a simple conductor. So, platinum oxide for example, it platinum can form oxide on this, but it is a very good electronic conductor. You will not see any of this behavior, the Warburg like behavior. Okay. We will continue with this tomorrow.